You see that field of view? I want you to crank that bad baby all the way up. Now you might My like, field of view maximized 105. Okay, 105. 105. 105. 105. 105. Is a high field of view actually the best choice? I play on a lower field of view, and for my playstyle, this choice has given me a massive advantage in PvP. Some of you are probably kind of confused right now, because since the dawn of time, almost everyone has vouched for using a high field of view of around 105. What I'm about to talk about in this video is a bit of a different perspective, because there are compelling reasons to run a lower field of view depending on your playstyle. Believe it or not, field of view actually changes the way that certain guns work, making or breaking their performance. And even if you're on a last gen console that doesn't have access to the field of view setting, don't worry because this video still applies to you especially if you think you're ever going to upgrade to a newer console or PC. So does all this mean that playing on a lower field of view is actually better? Well it depends on a few factors so let's jump into breaking down the pros and cons of FOV so that by the end of this video you can make an educated decision about what's actually best for you. Before we do that though, a word from the sponsor of this video, NordVPN. Finding the best settings in Destiny 2 for stuff like your FOV, sensitivity, and button mappings can be very complicated and confusing, but on the other hand, protecting your data and online activity with NordVPN couldn't be any easier. Regardless of whether you're on your phone, laptop, or PC, you can enhance your internet privacy by simply clicking Quick Connect. A while ago, I used to think VPNs were some complicated and strange technology only for advanced users, but you can literally just click one button to encrypt your data and stay safe. Especially when it comes to sensitive information like passwords and online banking, it's really important to protect yourself online. And Nord has got you guys covered with a massive 73% discount and an additional free month if you sign up today at nordvpn.com slash shadowdestiny. And if you change your mind, no worries, you can get a full refund within 30 days. So use the link in the description and thanks again to Nord for sponsoring today's video. Okay, back to the content. Since there are so many misconceptions about this topic, let's start out with a couple of important fundamentals. FOV is a setting that changes what your camera shows you in Destiny 2. I went in-game and took a screenshot of every FOV value from the minimum of 55 all the way up to the maximum of 105 to show you guys the difference. You can see on screen now that as the FOV increases, you get to see more stuff on your screen and everything gets a bit smaller. And then as you go back down, you'll notice that while less stuff is visible, the things that are on screen become noticeably larger. So essentially, your FOV is controlling what you can see and how big those things are. Make sure to keep that in mind because it's really important to know later in this video. FOV also has a huge impact on the visual appearance of movement within the game. Like you can see here that on 105, the maximum field of view, I seem to be moving rather fast, but then on 55, the lowest field of view, I seem to be moving at a snail's pace. In reality though, I'm moving exactly the same speed in both of these clips and you can see that it takes me exactly the same amount of time to run from one side of this lane to the other. So now that you understand all of that, let's get into how to choose what FOV is right for you and why a low field of view might be super powerful for your playstyle, because it certainly is for mine. I'm going to be going through a few equally important points before jumping to any type of conclusion or recommendation, so stay tuned. First of all, the actual visual appearance of your opponents is an extremely important factor to consider when choosing an FOV. For example, check out this comparison between minimum FOV on the left and maximum FOV on the right. Clearly, the opponent on the left is much larger than the one on the right. His character model is larger, his head is larger, and he just generally takes up more space on the screen. So therefore, the larger guardian is a whole lot easier to hit than the smaller guardian. This is an extreme example, but check out this long lane on Midtown. If you're on maximum FOV, a guardian way back by the boxes is just a few pixels wide, and you probably can't even see him if you're watching this on a phone. When I first started playing Destiny PC, I was on a laptop, and the small screen size made sniping almost impossible on max field of view because people were like 2 pixels wide. Regardless of your monitor size though, the lower your FOV, the larger your targets will be. As you might imagine, this is rather important for players like myself who tend to engage at longer distances. Even if you're more of a mid to close range player using a hand cannon or SMG, having a larger target will still make them easier to hit. The way I like to describe the overall concept is imagine you're threading a needle in real life. It's easier to thread the needle if you hold it close and see it in more detail, but if you're holding it far away at arm's length, it becomes a lot more difficult to accurately put the thread through the eye of the needle. Although this is a significant visual benefit associated with a lower FOV, I would be leading you guys astray if I didn't mention the visual downsides as well. So as I mentioned earlier, a lower FOV will make your targets larger, but it also makes you simply see less of your surroundings. As you can see in this example, on max FOV I can clearly see this hunter jumping above me, but on minimum FOV he simply isn't on my screen yet. 
This is obviously a very extreme example because I'm comparing the highest and the lowest, so here's a more reasonable comparison. At 90 field of view, I can only see part of the hunter, while on max, I can see his whole body. I found that having a higher field of view matters a lot when you're in point blank, super close range engagements like this one, but it doesn't really matter if you're in medium to long range. It's important to keep this in mind, but this is far from the only thing that your field of view will influence. The next really important thing that your field of view does is mess with the visual recoil and change the way that certain weapons perform. While it does change the way that the weapon model recoils, there seems to be a misconception that it also changes the actual recoil on your shots. Just like the running example from earlier, this is actually just an illusion. Check out this example where I shoot my gun at the wall. As you can see, the bullets are going exactly the same height on the wall even though there is a noticeable difference in the way that the barrel appears to be recoiling. Think about it this way. FOV is essentially just changing your view of the weapon, but the weapon itself still does the same thing. This can have a massive positive or negative impact on the weapon's performance regardless of whether you're on controller or mouse and keyboard. Check out this tweet from my friend Ascendant Nomad. He found that changing his field of view from 105 to 95 instantly made Crimson feel better, like a night and day difference. I tested this out and sure enough, your FOV will literally make or break Crimson's performance. If you're on 105 FOV, look how the weapon model recoils upward and fully covers up the reticle. When you're shooting at a target, this is completely awful because you won't be able to see what you're shooting at. However, if you turn the FOV down to a moderate 80, observe how the reticle is visible at all times. When looking at a side-by-side -side comparison, it's incredibly obvious why Crimson performs so much better on a lower FOV setting, and hence on older consoles. I'd argue that Crimson is still marginally better on controller than on MNK, but the real difference maker here is definitely the field of view setting. In light of this discovery and what I'm about to mention, Nomad has permanently switched to 95 FOV, a value that is quite reasonable and also used by other talented PvP players like Grenader Jake. In a reply to that tweet about Crimson, Kamikakes also said that Last Word connected much better for him while using a very low FOV. And if you recall the previous section in this video, this makes a ton of sense because 65 field of view would be making his targets and their heads considerably larger and thus making it a lot easier for him to connect his shots even on mouse and keyboard. This is by no means limited to Crimson and Last Word though. Check out this comparison of Survivor's Epitaph, the most popular 180 hand cannon in the game. At 105 FOV, it clearly covers up your target while firing at the head, so you kind of just have to guess where your opponent is, and that will inevitably make you less accurate. And now check out this comparison between 80 and 105. It's clear that the reticle isn't being covered up at 80, but it's actually a huge problem at 105. Clearly this effect is like night and day for stuff like Survivor's Epitaph and Crimson, but it still has a surprisingly noticeable impact on lots of other guns in the game. For example, Thorn's reticle is almost completely hidden for a lot of the recoil animation on max FOV, but the problem is fixed on a lower FOV. Even Ace of Spades will have its reticle sometimes obscured by using max FOV. For Ace though, its reticle does become visible before it's time to fire again, even on max FOV, but still, I think everyone can agree that it's always beneficial to see the reticle at all times and as much as possible. Something I should also address is the impact, or rather lack thereof, that FOV has on your turning speed. I always hear people saying, man, I feel like I'm turning at a different speed with this new FOV. Just like the sprinting example from a few minutes ago, your FOV merely creates the illusion that you're turning at a different speed. Check out this example. In both clips, you can see that it takes exactly the same amount of time to turn around 360 degrees. In this first clip, I was on maximum FOV, and in the second clip, I'm on minimum FOV. It definitely feels like a different experience in-game, but technically speaking, the sensitivity is exactly the same. So if you do end up changing your field of view after watching this video, you'll need to get used to a new feeling, but your muscle memory will remain intact and there's no need to actually go in and change your sensitivity. Yet another thing I feel obligated to mention is the last generation consoles. PS4s and Xbox Ones are locked at 75 field of view. For some reason, people seem to think that these consoles are at 85 or 72 FOV, and I actually used to believe the claim that they're at 72, but then I just went in-game and tested it out for myself because it seems that everyone is super confused on this entire topic. And sure enough, this is me on 75 FOV, and this is a screenshot from a last generation console. Other than the differences in the lighting and the HUD, these are identical images, so I can confirm that 75 FOV is equivalent to the console experience. Very quickly, I also want to mention performance. Based on my testing, it seems that increasing or decreasing your FOV doesn't have a significant impact on your frames per second. Presumably, this is due to a trade-off that is occurring because as you decrease your FOV, less stuff needs to be displayed on the screen, but your system will now also have to render the stuff that is on the screen in more detail. 
I've gotten so many questions about this topic and there seems to be so many misconceptions about how FOV actually works. So if you've got a friend who thinks that they're being severely handicapped by an older console's FOV, or if you've got a friend who thinks that 105 is unquestionably the best field of view setting, send them this video because they'll probably find it pretty interesting. So here's what you've all been waiting for, it's time to make some recommendations and statements regarding FOV. So first of all, I think a high field of view of about 95 to 105 is almost certainly the best choice if you exclusively use super short range weapons like shotguns and SMGs and never use anything else. For a super aggressive playstyle, it's incredibly important to be able to see as much of your surroundings as possible so that you can acquire targets fast and then also keep track of them when they're dodging and jumping and flying around you in close range. Even if you do exclusively play super aggressive though, I'd encourage you to at least experiment with 100, 95, or 90 just to see how it goes because, who knows, maybe getting extra headshots is worth the downside of seeing just a tiny bit less of your surroundings. On the opposite end of the spectrum, I think a lower field of view is optimal for players like myself who heavily prioritize precision loadouts and tend to play at more of a distance. People always ask me how I'm so accurate and, well, I guess this is a piece of the puzzle. I love snipers, pulses, hand cannons, and I occasionally use auto rifles, bows, fusions, and linear fusions, and those are all mid to long range weapons. I get the benefit of having massive heads to shoot at, and I don't really suffer from having less visibility because as long as I don't let the shotgunners close the gap on me, it's super easy to just keep the opponents in the center of my screen. Even when I'm in close range with something like a chaperone, I feel like my field of view makes the heads really huge and easy to hit. I currently play on 80 field of view, and ever since I switched, my sniper accuracy has just skyrocketed. I had a 96% headshot accuracy during my trials carry stream last Friday, and you should totally follow my Twitch by the way, twitch.tv slash shadowdestiny, I'd love to see you there. So overall, I'd like to leave you guys with this statement. If you want to hit more headshots or just improve your overall aim, a slightly lower field of view might be the best choice for you, if you don't mind sacrificing just a bit of visibility. I currently play on 80 and everything between 80 and 95 works great for me, but I wouldn't recommend anything below 75 because sacrificing that much visibility is taking things a little too far in my opinion. As a meme, I did actually try out a game at 55 FOV for this video, and I ended up dropping 45 kills and going on a Wii ran out of medals, but uh... I felt like I was half blind, so I wouldn't recommend it. If you're used to 105 and you turn it down a bit, it's gonna feel awful when you first switch because it looks super slow in comparison, but just try to remember it's all just an illusion and your movement and aiming is just as fast as before. I recently started a Patreon account and in addition to it being the number one best way to support the channel, members also receive cool benefits like exclusive content, early access to all my YouTube videos, personalized PvP tips, and more. So check it out at the link in the description or simply head to patreon.com slash shadowdestiny. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my breakdown on Field of View. If you did, smash the like button so YouTube can show this video to more people. Next up, if you're a controller player and you haven't seen the video on the top right of the screen yet, you should absolutely go watch it now. Just like Field of View, sensitivity is a really misunderstood setting and I guarantee that you'll learn something important by watching that video. Thanks so much for watching this video, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.